Welcome guys to Undiluted Tech and today we are going to install vCenter server. Now I'm starting this the other direction. Uh, I'll do another video on how to install the hypervisor. But anyway, to get started, go to vmware.com and this is the front page that you're going to see and you want to hit downloads and you want to choose vSphere. Once you hit vSphere, then you get your uh, list here doesn't matter which one you download. If you haven't downloaded the vSphere hypervisor, this is a good time to do that. Uh, but anyways, uh, if you go to uh, downloads, you're going to need an account, a uh, VMware account. As, as you can see, I've already downloaded this before and it's telling me I need to get a uh, trial download. And I'm going to hit the trial download. Uh, there you go. I've already uh, logged in. I have an account, so you will need an account and I have 34 days remaining for this evaluation period. So the thing with this is after 60 days, then you have to do your lab again. So let's get going. Uh, like I said before, if you haven't downloaded uh, the hypervisor, the vSphere hypervisor, this is your chance right now. Go ahead. I've already downloaded it. But this video is about vCenter server. So I'm going to come down here to vCenter server. And as you can see, they've deprecated the Windows version of it. So there's no more Windows. Uh, I know they said that in 6.5 they were going to do it, but then they did it on, you know, there's no standalone server, which it's better off with a VMware appliance, which is a virtual machine. It's better that way because you can back up your VMware. I mean, your virtual machine, if it breaks, you can bring it back. But so hit a manual download. And over here is going to start downloading. So I'm going to pause this video until it's done. And then when it's done, we get back to where we stopped. All right. All right, my download is ready and I've already opened it, uh, the folder that I put it in. Now, this VCSA, that's the virtual appliance that we are gonna install. Uh, what we are going to do is right click it. Actually, what? Uh, we're supposed to mount it. Let's go to open, I guess. All right, I have a computer glitch there for a minute. So let's right click this. If you have the option to mount, you can go ahead and mount, but I'm gonna go open with Windows Explorer. And here you get all these options. Which one do you use? Uh, if you wanna use the command line, you can use uh, VCSA command line. Well, I'm gonna go with the GUI, so UI. And if you're using a Linux machine or a Mac, you get these two folders, this one for Linux, and this is for Mac. I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm gonna uh, double click that one and come to here where it says installer exe. I'm gonna double click that one, give it a few minutes. All right, and you get this window once it opens up. Uh, if you're migrating from a Windows installation, like uh, the one they deprecated, then you're gonna hit migrate. If you are restoring, you can restore. If you're upgrading, you can upgrade your appliance. But in our case, we are doing a fresh install. So we go with the install. So stage one, you can read through this if you want. And we are going to just go ahead with the default and click next. Accept the the terms of uh, license and agreement, the ULR. Hit next. Now, here comes the tricky part. Now, if you have multiple uh, v centers, then you want to go with the platform service controller that you have to install that separate and then the v center separate. But in our case, it's a home lab, it's basically just for you to play around with. So, we're gonna go with the embedded platform service controller. So, hit next. Now, which ESXi host are you gonna put this on? Because, like I said, this is a virtual machine, we're not doing the Windows standalone. Uh, I haven't done the video for this because I started backwards. And then I'll show you guys how to install the vSphere if you don't know, or you can watch other videos on YouTube. But let's use the IP address that I'm gonna use here. So I think this is what I'm using right here. Okay. And the root, the username is a root. Uh, this will be your super secure password from your USXI machine. So that's my IP address. Then we're gonna hit next. And you're gonna get a certificate warning because it's a self-signed certificate and you're gonna hit yes. And it's gonna go ahead and validate. Now, one thing I wanna 
point out here you cannot install uh vCenter without dns so i've already configured my dns and everything that's why everything is looking smooth but if you haven't configured dns then you won't be able to do anything uh second of all you cannot license your hypervisor with a free license or any license otherwise you'll keep getting errors where you can't go to step two so if you install your vSphere first do not license it until you get done installing vCenter now that's out the way let's move on what do we want to name our vCenter now like I said I had DNS and I'm gonna okay name mine vCenter.home.lab yeah I think so yep I'm gonna set a root password super secure password Oh, we took that one. We'll keep that one. All right. Now I already have DNS and I have a domain controller. That's why you see the home.lab. Uh, if you want to have a domain controller, that's fine. Uh, it's, not reco I mean, it's not mandatory, but it's recommended. So we're going to go ahead and hit next. And my machine is kind of slow, so bear with me here. Here's the deployment sizes. Now, these are the requirements actually for this page. I should have pulled that over from uh, VMware, but these are the requirements for vCenter. Now, if you're running tiny like we're gonna pick right here, you need two CPUs if you're gonna have like 10 hosts on there and 100 v virtual machines. Now, if you're gonna have more than 10, so you, the number increases. If you're gonna use for small, you're gonna have a a hundred hosts and a thousand VMs and this list goes on and on. You can go to VMware documentation to see the system requirements. Anyways, on our case, we're gonna sh choose Tiny and then the default for Tiny is 250. So that's the default size. We can go to extra large, it should be like uh, 300, I believe. Oh, actually they changed it. So for Tiny, the storage requirement is 300. For small is 350 and the list goes on. The larger you get, the more storage requirement and so we're gonna go with the default which is gonna be 300 up to 10 host and 100 VMs if you go small you need a hundred host of which if it's a home lab I don't think you're gonna have a hundred host but you can see the list so we're gonna go ahead with choose tiny hit next and here we go I've already created um my data center and as you can see I have 348 uh, requirement is 300 I got at least 40 GB out there just for safety now you can click thin disk mode if you want but it's not recommended so don't even mess with it so we're just gonna leave that alone uh, you, if you have vSUNs if you're gonna install a vSUN this is the option right here but we're not gonna do that we're just gonna go ahead and select our data center and click next now which network are we gonna use oh my I'm gonna use the what I have on my DNS I think it's uh, 200 and uh, slash 24 here for my class C my default gateway da, 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 I think that's it now my DNS server have two domain controllers so I'm gonna separate them by commas. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, those are my two DNS servers. Um, I can add my uh, just for the sake of it. My default gateway. Okay, and. These are the ports that are going to be used by my vCenter 443 for HTTP secure and non secure port 80. Okay, IPv4 if you're using IPv6, good for you. Um, this is option if you want to put a, you know, like you can read over there. So, why not, right? If we put vCenter.home.lab. Uh, you can use it. Uh, doesn't make a difference for me. So let's hit next. And right here, stage one, confirm that's everything that you need. Now, remember, we didn't choose thin. That's why it says thick right here. It's going to take the 300 
off the bat. So 300 of your disk space is going to be taken by the virtual machine. Or I mean, this virtual plants, which is vCenter. So system name, make sure everything is right. And to me, it looks good. So we're going to hit finish. Now, this is going to take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the how powerful your machine is. I know my machine is not that powerful. So I'm going to pause this video, come back when this is done. And if you want to see if your machine is going on, we can actually check it here. 14, uh, advanced, yeah, add exception here, confirm security. And this is the ESXi that I installed earlier, and I'll show you how to install that on a, I couldn't do it on a physical machine, but I'll do it on a VM, that's why I did it backwards. Enter your super secure password. I'm going to save it. And if you check down here, you'll see your machine is running and is being deployed. That's how to confirm, you know, if your machine is going on and right now it's at uh, 93%. As you can see, uh, let's see. If they say complete successfully we can go back and continue well and our machine has completed successfully and as you can see the two the 300 gb is taken 281 so this is how much is left 68 only so that's that's a lot man and you really need to have your resources out there as you can see, my CPU is being utilized at 49%. My RAM, which is another requirement, should be 16 and 1.8 is being used. So uh, let me pull back the vCenter. Actually, it's on uh, 80%. This thing lied to me. Okay, I'm going to pause the video. Come back when it's done. And stage one is complete. You have successfully deployed the vCenter server with an embedded platform service controller. So, what do we do next? Continue. All right. Everything is running smooth. So, the key is to prepare before you begin. So, I suggest you prepare really well. All right. So, st stage one is done. We'll go ahead and stage two. Like I said, you need a domain controller, DNS server, and everything should run smooth. All right. So, I like to synchronize with my ESXi host. Okay, we're gonna pick that. You can use your NTP server, which let's actually do that. I'm gonna use my DNS server right here. Oh, wait a second, that is not a it's 32.1 and 172.16.32.2. And then NTP actually pool dot NTP dot org. Okay. I'm gonna enable SSH for troubleshooting later if in case we run into a problem. And then we're gonna hit next. Okay, single sign on domain. Now I don't have any single sign on domain remaining, but right here we're gonna use our domain controller, which in my case it's home.lab, and then uh, put in this password, super secure password. And my password does not meet the requirement, still no. Let me see if it will take this. Oh, geez. Okay. Now, I'm not sure whether this is going to cause a problem with my domain controller, but we shall see. 
Okay, well, it took that one. Hopefully, it's not going to cause any problems later. Anyways, this is your choice. You want to join? Personally, this is a test lab. In 60 days, I'm going to rebuild again. Actually, in 34 days, I'm going to rebuild it again. So, hit next. And here, you have the chance to confirm your settings. So, one, two, pull on MTP. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, and everything looks good. And all you need to do is hit finish. And then you get a warning, you will not be able to pause or stop this installation. You hit OK. And the confirmation about to start, which will take another five to ten minutes. So I'm going to pause the video, come back when it's done. And your vCenter server is complete. So you can go to this address right here to access it which we're gonna do right now. And I'm gonna drag this over here. Oh, come on. There we go. So I hit advanced, add exception. Oh, come on. Okay, let's try another way to do this. I'm gonna X that out and just copy that. Close. Let's put a new tab right here. Oops, let's see. Add exception, yes, confirm. And here we go. Your V center server. Now there's a new way it used to be flash mode, but that's not there anymore. I haven't tried the web client flex, so I'm gonna go with what I know, which is vSphere client HTML5. And if you click on that one, you should be able to log in into your new vCenter server now. Ah, oh, the username. I think we said it was administrator. Uh, I believe. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, home your lab. Jeez, I already forgot this. This is so embarrassing. Hmm, something is happening, maybe. Okay, let me pause this and see if, if it will go on. Oh yeah, and it went through. Just took a minute. Okay, my CPU exhaustion on vCenter server. So I need to um, go take a look at that because my CPU apparently it's not that good. All right, and here you go. This is uh, your new vCenter server. Uh, there's also another neat trick here I found out over time and I think is that what's all it's what V center dot home dot lab and I think it's fifty four eighty if I remember correctly it's a uh, well I guess that's not it hmm. yeah it's a way for you to monitor your uh, V center appliance but I guess it doesn't work with this version but anyways here you are um your license is expiring pretty soon so i better check that and see what's going on but here we go man now this is where we're gonna be doing all our virtual machines managing all our this this sphere this sphere hypervisors yeah and this is gonna be our management console uh thank you guys for watching uh that's the only video i wanted to show you how to install that um, I'll do another video on how to do this fear, but I feel like I shouldn't because there's some out there that you can go watch. But anyways, thank you for watching and Delta Tech. See you later, suckers.